Non-stop progress continues. SpaceX is accelerating production of the B-19 stack, aiming to complete it within the next few weeks, and the path toward Flight 12 is becoming increasingly clear. Preparations at the launch pad are also moving forward as teams work through each remaining task. In addition, SpaceX has just achieved new records in both launch cadence and booster reuse, reinforcing its leadership in orbital operations. At the same time, Rocket Lab has announced new developments on one of the most distinctive systems for its neutron rocket, the Hungry Hippo. All of this and more on today's episode of Great SpaceX. It's safe to say that SpaceX is accelerating its progress toward Flight 12, especially in the aftermath of the B-18 incident. In a previous update, this rapid pace was demonstrated when SpaceX rolled four sections of B-19 within only five days. Even after that intense surge of activity, the company has continued to maintain a remarkably high rate of movement across the entire B-19 stack. On the morning of December 2nd, SpaceX transported the next section, known as the A-5-4 section, to Mega Bay 1. By the morning of December 4th, the A-6-4 section had also been moved into position. This second section appears to form the body of the liquid oxygen tank. With these components completed, the booster now has only the lower portions of the liquid oxygen tank left to assemble, followed by the engine bay and the forward sections that complete both ends of the vehicle. Before those final assemblies could begin, SpaceX moved the fuel transfer tube into Mega Bay 1 on the 6th. This tube represents a significant redesign in the V3 booster compared with earlier versions. The new transfer tube is substantially larger, nearly equivalent in scale to the tube used in Falcon 9. Its size requires SpaceX to install it earlier in the assembly sequence before the booster is fully stacked. This change is not just a structural adjustment, it also represents a performance upgrade. The larger tube is expected to support the increased power and efficiency of the new Raptor 3 engines planned for Starship V3. It'll also enable faster and more reliable flip maneuvers, along with the possibility of simultaneous engine ignition during critical phases of flight. Even without formal flight validation, the tube has already proven its resilience. In the B-18 incident, the tube did not suffer severe damage. That that performance reinforced SpaceX's confidence in the design while also highlighting areas that can be refined as the company prepares for higher performance requirements. Once work on the fuel transfer tube was completed, attention turned to the liquid oxygen header tank. This component will attach to the lower end of the transfer tube. It was first seen through the narrow windows of the Star Factory on the evening of December 9th. By the morning of the 10th, it had been moved to Mega Bay 1 as well. Assembly of this tank is expected to begin shortly. Following this stage, SpaceX will need to move only a few more structural sections. The final two end sections will arrive and be integrated, which will bring the B-19 production sequence to completion. If this pace holds, the entire B-19 stack could be finished within one to two weeks. This rate of progress is significantly faster than what many observers expected. After the B-18 incident, there were widespread assumptions that the booster's schedule would slip considerably. Even when SpaceX stated that B-19 would be stacked in December, many predictions still anticipated final production extending into January of next year. However, beginning in late November, SpaceX increased the operational tempo and has sustained that remarkable speed through the present. If production concludes within the next two weeks, the company will likely end the year with a cryogenic test. That timeline would allow the first half of January of 2026 to focus on engine work and static fire campaigns, opening a realistic window for a Flight 12 launch opportunity in late January. For Flight 12 to occur in the near term, the rapid progress on B-19 is only one part of a much larger effort. Every system involved in the launch campaign must advance in parallel, and one of the most significant developments is now taking place at Starbase Pad 2. This new launch mount will serve as the next-generation platform designed to support Starship V3, and its installation continues to move forward with visible momentum. The most notable additions is the SQD system, which has recently been positioned as part of the broader integration work. While the remaining smaller components are prepared for installation, SpaceX has been conducting continuous testing at the pad. The most prominent of these these tests is the Flame Trench Deluge system, which is designed to protect the pad and vehicle by dispersing vast amounts of water to mitigate heat and pressure during major tests or launch events. The latest deluge test occurred on the afternoon of the 10th, and this test was not an isolated event. SpaceX conducted another test on the 9th and an earlier one on the 5th, resulting in three full-scale deluge activations within a single week. Although most views of these tests come from a considerable distance, making the system's strength harder to appreciate, 
Alternative footage recorded from closer vantage points offers a clearer understanding of the system's power. In the most recent image, taken from a position facing one end of the flame trench, the force of the water becomes unmistakable. The spray reaches a significant height, and the volume expelled from the nozzles demonstrates the system's readiness to support much more powerful vehicles in the future. Its first operational customer will be B-19, the prototype advancing through production at remarkable speed. Equally important to the Fly-12 schedule is the progress of S-39. Recent activity at Megabay 2 shows that its stacking phase is essentially complete, and its heat shield system stands out as an impressive testament to SpaceX's ambitious goals for the V-3 generation. With this level of completion, it's reasonable to expect that S-39 may roll to the Massey test site as early as next week for cryogenic testing. The SQD system has been installed on the test stand for an extended period and appears fully prepared to support these operations. If cryogenic testing concludes successfully in the third week of the month, S-39 could begin static fire testing in early January. This sequence will proceed without delay from B-19's schedule, because the booster and ship conduct their static fires at separate facilities. Taken together, the steady advancement of S-39 and the rapid development of Pad-2 align to reinforce the expectation that Flight 12 can reasonably launch in January. The next series of tests will showcase how the Starship system begins to demonstrate its evolving capabilities, and all eyes will be on how the these critical phases unfold. Now, let us move on to the latest updates regarding SpaceX's Falcon 9 launch and reuse achievements. These accomplishments continue to underscore why the Falcon 9 remains the most reliable, most frequently flown, and most cost-effective orbital launch vehicle in operation today. The newest reuse milestone occurred during a mission launched at 5.26 p.m. Eastern on December 8th in Florida. This flight successfully carried 29 satellites into orbit, but the true significance of the mission came from the booster that performed it. <clears throat> the launch utilized Booster 1067, which currently leads SpaceX's fleet in total reuse. After powering the ascent for roughly two and a half minutes, B-1067 separated from the upper stage and executed its return sequence, performing a controlled propulsive landing on the autonomous drone ship JRTI, positioned in the Atlantic Ocean. This mission marked the 32nd launch and landing for B-1067. 1067. No other booster in the Falcon family and no other orbital rocket in the world has achieved this level of reuse. It's an unprecedented milestone that illustrates SpaceX's unmatched lead in booster recovery, rapid turnaround, operational efficiency, and cost reduction. Even when projecting 5 to 10 years into the future, it remains unlikely that any competing launch system will match these reuse numbers. With this latest mission, B-1067 now needs only 8 additional flights to reach SpaceX's stated goal of 40 flights per booster. Given that B-1067 alone has flown 8 times this year, reaching the 40-flight target next year appears highly achievable. Meanwhile, SpaceX set a new launch cadence milestone on December 10th during a mission that lifted off at 6.40 a.m. Eastern from California. This mission placed 27 satellites into orbit and concluded with another successful drone ship landing on OCISLY. According to launch statistics, this mission represented the 577th Falcon 9 launch overall and the 160th Falcon 9 launch of the year. This extraordinary pace reflects a launch cadence that no other rocket family has come close to matching. As a result of this milestone, SpaceX is now only 10 flights away from reaching its annual goal of 170 Falcon 9 launches. With the remaining days in December still available, that target is within reach. The only question now is whether SpaceX can close the year with a historic finish. We'll find out soon as the company pushes toward the final stretch. Now let's turn our attention to Rocket Lab's latest advancement on its upcoming medium lift rocket, Neutron. This vehicle has drawn continuous attention because of its distinctive reusable architecture, especially the integrated fairing system known as the Hungry Hippo. In the most recent update, this defining component has finally appeared in a fully tested and qualified form. On December 8th, Rocket Lab released a detailed video showcasing the Hungry Hippo fairing undergoing a series of opening and closing tests. The video also included a brief moment showing a person standing inside the fairing, offering a clear sense of its impressive scale relative to a human being. This vision confirmed not only the fairing's diameter, but also its internal volume, which will play an important role in Neutron's payload accommodation and reuse strategy. Alongside the footage, Rocket Lab issued a statement announcing, We have completed qualification and acceptance testing of the Hungry Hippo fairing for Neutron. With the design, structure, and operations of Neutron's fixed reusable fairing and upper module now proven out, Hungry Hippo is ready for launch. The company also shared key performance metrics from its qualification campaign. 
According to the update, the fairing demonstrated the ability to open and close under flight-like conditions in only one and a half seconds. This is less than half the duration needed for stage separation and vehicle reorientation, which highlights the precision and response speed of the mechanism. Additionally, Rocket Lab applied 275,000 pounds of distributed force across the carbon composite structure to simulate the aerodynamic stress experienced during Max-Q. The canards, which help guide the first stage during ascent and re-entry also underwent testing at 125% of their expected mechanical loads, ensuring a substantial safety margin. Following the successful completion of these tests, Rocket Lab announced the movement of the Hungry Hippo assembly toward Launch Complex 3. The company shared images showing the fairing module being transported by barge and by trailer. Once at LC3, the fairing will be integrated with Neutron's first stage as part of a broader pre-launch preparation campaign. These steps will include a full series of system tests and a static hot fire of the nine Archimedes engines that will power the reusable booster. When fully stacked, Neutron will stand 141 feet or 43 meters tall with a diameter of 23 feet or 7 meters and will be capable of delivering up to 28,700 pounds or 13,000 kilograms to low Earth orbit. Sean DeMello, Rocket Lab's vice president for Neutron, remarked on December 8th that a rocket like Neutron has never been built before and we're doing it at a pace and price point that's going to bring the innovation and competition needed in today's industry. Collectively, these milestones signal Rocket Lab's growing readiness to conduct Neutron's inaugural launch early next year. The unique reusable fairing design showcased through the Hungry Hippo adds a new dimension of innovation that will contribute to an increasingly competitive landscape as Neutron, Starship, and other next-generation vehicles enter service. The months ahead promise significant developments, and it'll be compelling to see how these new systems reshape the market. In any case, folks, this has been Kevin with Great SpaceX. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already to stay up to date with yours truly on the latest milestones in SpaceX's journey. Thank you so much for watching, and always remember, curiosity, imagination, and inspiration will follow you so long as you keep looking up.